opinion. But it also has a value which is higher than the actual cost of production. Because you spent time, it was created by someone, it was created somewhere, it has a place in history. If you look at normal coins, like this, now this is worth five kroners Swedish. Not because the metal is worth five kroners, but because my central bank and my government tells me that you can pay five kroners worth of tax with this coin. It's a fiat currency. So, how do we think about value when the cost of production or reproduction is zero? What's the value of a digital work? The bits and bytes that make it up has virtually no value. And it can be duplicated endlessly. This is not something that's new. Uh, Walter Benjamin, some of you might know him, he wrote about this in 1935 in a work called The Work of Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction. And what he realized, or what he wrote about, is that the copy of a work is different from the original. Because the original lacks, uh, sorry, the copy lacks the presence in time and space which the original has. And that's how they're different. But more importantly, he realized that there's a disconnect between the physical cost of creating a work and its actual value. So, how does this relate to digital work? Well, the digital work is created still by someone somewhere. And we all know that, to a large extent today, we are what we create. And this is called the reputation economy. Right? And we see it all around us. We see it in LinkedIn, in Twitter. We see it at the PHP University on badges. This is reputation. Anyone here know what a woofy is? No one knows who the Goofy is. You know what a Goofy is, Rufus. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think, so. I think it's a term, I think it originally is, but I mean, it's, 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 it's a kind of a page rank or reputation rank. Exactly. Uh, it, yes, it's Cory Doctorow, term the term Goofy to explain a reputation-based currency in a sort of post-scarcity society. Um, and slowly we're getting there. Uh, we're getting towards reputation being more and more important. But what if people don't actually know what we have created, well, obviously our reputation goes down. Our own value goes down. Our ability to get jobs, to do awesome projects, to get a Shuttleworth Foundation fellowship and stuff like that decreases. So the value of a digital world today is more than ever that it was created by someone and that creates a value for someone. If you're a photographer, if you're a teacher, your reputation is through association with what you've actually done, with the digital works that you made and the jobs that you've done. So attribution is important for reputation and the project that we're now focusing on is therefore important, one, to help people actually build this reputation by associating them with what they've actually done. It also helps people to release materials into the loop because they can feel more secure than before that people will actually attribute them when they're passing things around on the internet. And it helps, obviously, people to use material which are in the open. Because they can take something knowing that the metadata that explains the licensing term and attribution is automatically included in what they're copying. So we need the tools, we need the standards, open standards, to actually make this happen. To make this link between the work and the attribution and licensing information persistent and useful for people. And what we're doing um, during this year, essentially, is that we're creating a number of prototypes. We're creating a number of, uh, well, showcases and best practice guides to show people what the world could look like if we had this technology, if we had these standards, if we had these tools actually in place. And then for the next step, next iteration, then we could actually start building something. But to start with, we need to put this vision out there to show people that this is what we're aiming for. And that's why it's a bit sad, but you know, obviously I need to disappoint Kathy and, and Mark and so on, say that you know, this doesn't exist today. Um, we'll get there. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow it will. Tomorrow it will. <laughs> um, unfortunately, the area that I'm working in, so these standardization efforts, 
uh, suffers from a little bit the same as we discussed yesterday, this balkanization, uh, especially from the industry. Because I'm not satisfied doing something for the free and open source community, sorry, the open content community. That's never going to fly. We need something that actually has industry backing behind it so that big players like Google, like Yahoo, like Flickr and so on can sign up to this. And they're not signing up to the standards that exist today, and there are standards that exist today, because it's too fragmented. Essentially, every industry group has their own standard. And everyone agrees that this is bad. Everyone agrees that there needs to be a convergence around single standards. Of course, unfortunately, everyone agrees that people should converge around their own standards, <laughs> not anyone else's. This is a not invented here syndrome. So, we have one piece up our screen, and that is because we're doing this as free and open source software, the best practices that we come up with that explains how to actually do this in, the, in you know, in practical terms, we'll try to encode this into a software development kit, the library, that people can then use within their products to implement support for the metadata standards that we are advocating. And the ace that we have up our sleeve is that because we are a free and open source project, we'll have a much easier time to get this actually implemented within WordPress and Drupal and other open source solutions. And if we get Drupal, now people were surprised about this this morning, but if we get Drupal, we'll suddenly get 25% of all governments worldwide using this metadata or supporting this metadata. If we get WordPress as well, then we'll get 50-70% of all the blogs. And that's, of course, an incredible incentive to then go to the industry and say that, hey, we've got this coverage already. You should actually join us. You should support our standards as well. But that's the part that we're not yet ready to play yet because, well, we don't have the technology in place, and it could obviously be much better if the industry would sort of tag along on the way there. Uh, but if push comes to show, then we'll play that part at some point. Something really awesome that you should be aware of is that we recently discovered that PDF is actually a lot more powerful than we thought in terms of metadata, um, which is really, really, really useful for us. Um, most of the tools for PDF only deal with metadata that is part of the catalog of PDF. This essentially means that you have the same metadata for the entire document. But Adobe was actually a bit clever when they made a standard. So they made it so that metadata can actually be attached to any object in a PDF. Which means that if we do this right, we can actually get every single page can have a different license, can have a different attribution. Every single image can have different authorship information, different information. Every sentence, every character, essentially every object of an individual PDF can have different metadata attached to it. So that's really interesting. Um, and that's definitely something I'm going to work on. Um, but there's a lot of other neighboring areas to this. I'm, we're talking you know, about this here, and I'm, I'm showing you this video, um, which makes it appear that you know, it's got this one little open standard component that you just plug into things, and then magically everything will work. <coughs> the reality is not so simple. Um, there's a number of sort of neighboring areas to the areas that we're working on. So we have one standard, which is called ODRL, Open Data Rights Language, which is a W3C community group initiative, which can help us to actually express rights in a, in a very useful way. We can express essentially any right, including open licenses. Uh, but that only tells us, you know, how do you express this as an XML or RDF schema? Then you need to actually force this into the file itself. And then, of course, every file format has a different way of doing that. PDF has one way, it's XMP. In image files, you have either IPTC, or you have EXIT, or you have something else. Um, in OER, I'm, I'm sure there's different ways as well of, of sort of putting the metadata in the right places. Um, so there's two different standards for that, or several different standards that we need to deal with. Um, and then, the interesting part is that you also need to be able to uniquely identify works. All of the standards that deal with rights, they start out by asking, okay, which work do you want to 
create this metadata form. It's not the work in which it is embedded, but it's a work which has a unique identifier, and from an industry perspective, this identifier should ideally be registered in a metadata registry somewhere, or a copyright registry somewhere. And that's obviously not going to fly uh, very far uh, to require everyone who publishes something on, on Flickr or any other platform to first go to an industry group and ask for an, a unique identifier for their work, which they can then embed. So we don't need to have a solution for that, but we need to have some sort of answer. And we don't need to do the work on it, but we need to push people in the direction of creating some sort of open registry or, or open unique identifier database. Um, yes, and uh, fingerprinting, obviously very important in this context as well, um, for the simple reason that if you upload a work to Flickr, the unfortunate situation today is that the metadata that you have attached to that work gets lost. The moment that Flickr resizes the image, it's lost. They have cut it out. Um, they keep the metadata themselves, and it's part of the original image if you download that, but any derivative of it is easy to cut off. Um, there might be some changes to this, but of course there's more platforms out there than Flickr. And a lot of the time, they don't do it purposefully. They have used a library like GD in PHP, which doesn't know about metadata. And yes, because it doesn't know about metadata, when they resize an image, they create a new image, and then don't copy the metadata along to it. So, that's also something that we need to deal with. Uh, and one way of dealing with that is obviously to do fingerprinting. So instead of or in combination with unique identifier, you might do a fingerprint of a photograph with the idea that this fingerprint remains the same even if someone scales it up or down or shops small pieces away from it. And then you obviously need to look up the metadata in a registry as well because it's been lost in the process. So all of these things we have a lab around us. And a lot of them we can do with collaboration, um, but we need to sort of push people in that direction. And we started this project, or I started this project, um, with the idea that eventually in the future we're going to see essentially two different entities based on this. We're going to have a for-profit entity that can sort of commercialize and, and find the commercial relevance of the technology that we're developing, uh, and then not for profit entity, which can actually host the technology platform itself. Um, one of the business ideas is that this not for profit organization can develop the tools that people need in order to implement this technology in free and open source projects and for open licenses. But if someone like Associated Press or Getty Images comes to us and says, well, we'd like to use the same technology base, which they should be doing. Uh, but we'd like to have different licenses. Or we'd like to implement this within our closed enterprise. Then obviously they should go to the for-profit company and then that would generate revenue which then we can feed back into the community. And the problem is now, or some of the problems, is, uh, and this is where I need to turn to you guys, uh, because I figured that now that I have you here, I'm going to get much more from you guys in the time that I have left here than I could get in several months of communicating. <laughs> um, so, first, before I get the questions to you, do you have any questions for me? Or is everything crystal clear about what you're doing? <laughs> it's surprising to actually. Okay. okay. Yes. What exactly is the software that needs to get built? So the first thing that needs to be done is that we need to get this best practice guide that I explained, which says it tells you know which standards to use and how to use them, um, which includes things like the unique identifier, because the standard for rights expression doesn't say anything about what the unique identifier is. It, it just says you need to have one. Uh, and it's up to the implementation to specify what that unique identifier is. Is the UUID, is it a hash, is it a, uh, an ID from a register something, somewhere, or something else. It also needs to have uh, the concept of copyright holder, or, or author, or 
both, actually. Um, and it says that you need to have a unique identifier for the copyright holder. But again, it doesn't say, how do you get that unique identifier? Is it the name, is it a social security number, organizational number, or something else? So the best practice guide needs to go through and explain <coughs> exactly how to use the standards. And then based on this, we need to codify that into a software development kit, uh, which we honestly at this point have no clue how it's going to look like. <laughs> um, Creative Commons did some work on this uh, in 2007, 8, 9, something like this, called Lib License. Um, and it's a very, very simple toolkit that essentially does what we want to do, but only for CC licenses and without any concept of attribution just for the license itself. Um, so it will be an SDK, but what it will look like, we, we don't really know at this point. And then obviously on the way there, since I said we need to convince everyone that this is a good idea, then we're going to do a bunch of prototypes on the way to just show what can be done. Yeah, yes. So when you said um, like integration with like Drupal or WordPress, you just mean do you mean an official integration like as part of the core, or do you mean something where it's just a plugin for those? Right. There are different approaches to doing it. Yes, and, and this I, I, I don't envision anything um, not being able to go into the core, essentially. Um, because I see this technology base as something that's relevant, uh, well, essentially everywhere within WordPress uh, when you're dealing with any kind of digital content. The technology is the same, or we want it to be the same, at least. Um, of course, it's a ladder on the way there. Um, so you start by doing something as a plugin, seeing how far you can get, and then you start going around to developer conferences and introducing this to the community, getting people from the WordPress community interested in saying, this is a really cool idea. Um, and then eventually, you know, after some time, once you start having this interaction, then you might approach the subject, okay, so this is now so useful, it, we've gotten as far as we can, might it now be sense to try to integrate this into the development uh, branch. Is it possible to implement this in a way that <clears throat> doesn't simultaneously perfect DRM? <laughs> and enable, yes, I know. Up, yeah. enable YouTube's mm -hmm. content ID system across the entire web globally and right. let me right. just troll for I mean, yes. how does this not become some kind of massive publisher in game? Yeah, I, I understand exactly what you mean. Um, I don't know. Uh, there's no clear path or clear way in which you can actually do this division right from the start. Um, as with any you know, general technology, it becomes what you make of it. Um, and if someone wants to use ODRL and, and the standards that we advocate uh, to build a DRM system on top of that, then yes, they can do that actually. Uh, I don't know any way in which we can actually prevent them, um, except by us making this push that I spoke about that will make the tools available for open licenses and those are going to be free, they're going to be open, and everyone can use them. Um, and if you're coming as Associated Press, um, it's not certain that what you actually want to do in, in having restricted licenses, uh, that that will actually be supported by the platforms out there. So following on David's question, um, as this is currently business, would it be possible for someone to strip out the layers? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, technical barrier to the yeah. Oh, oh, oh. E. Um, do you really want to go there? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, of course there's ways. I mean, um, ODRL, uh, an early version of that, has been used in the mobile industry for content. Um, and they've added on top of this, or as a side part to it, uh, encryption and digital signatures, um, and then design the tools uh, in their mobile platform so that it doesn't actually do anything or it refuses to deal with any content which is not had its media legally signed by a trusted authority. Um, of course, we could do that. It, it's not a problem to do it. The technology is there. It's just a matter of implementing it. Um, it will make it much more difficult, of course, to work with it. Um, and I think it, you know, it, it I'm not sure if the problem will go away, right? So, because so if I can refuse, if I can refuse to uh, to let you work with media that aren't signed that way, I could also refuse to let you work with media that have open license. I mean, the, the, sure. The, the door is yeah. open to. 
kind of arbitrary restrictions on the part of big tool providers, right? Yes. Yeah. I, I'm not trying to be, no. I'm not yeah. trying to be a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I think it comes naturally. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. concerned not if it enables somebody else to use right. the metadata mm -hmm. in place, but if the metadata itself could be construed as a technical barrier. Because that, as you know, has little consequences. That triggers an anti circumvention. Yeah. Right. But oh. if the metadata itself doesn't constitute a technical barrier, right. someone else might be. So you're raising the metadata would be an NCA violation. But only if it's an effective technical barrier. So mm -hmm. what we basically okay. need to make sure is it's not an effective technical barrier. Oh, interesting. I, I, okay. That, that's the twist of it. It's not an effective technical barrier, we don't trigger the NCA. Hmm. Okay, so essentially, the, the less we do in the area of protecting it, the safer it will be from a DMCA perspective. Yes. yes. Yeah. So you know what I said about this all being really clear? Yeah. I'm suddenly not. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, it's a good point. So one of the ideas that I had when preparing, I'm coming to you before, one of the ideas that I had when preparing for this session, uh, the little time I had, was that I would actually uh, separate you into groups and saying, lawyers go here, technologists go here. <laughs> um, because there are so many different issues that are understandable, mostly if you're a lawyer, mostly if you're a technician. Um, to the programmers in here and the technicians, uh, generally, I mean, we should just talk about embedded formats and XMP and XML and, and stuff like that, which is not generally useful for most people. Um, Rufus, person, then. Yes, sir. Just so you want to hear, so it's really clear uh, challenge. I mean, I think you've, the question, of course, is that you've got the two-sided adoption right. problem. Right. And, 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 and this kind of problem, which is you know, the metacram, um, which is you know, people adding stuff or doing stuff, you're preserving this additional information. It's, it's your, your, you've got an incentive problem, which is, for example, if Flickr, Flickr is you're telling me deleting stuff, it could actually be super useful, right? Um, because they're not the you know, whereas the journalists at the end, you really like to have it, you know, Flickr don't, don't feel that, so you've kind of got to exert pressure. So I'm just wondering, do you, you, you obviously, obviously you've got a lot, but what are your, you know, what's your group, you think, the maximal incentive? Is there any smaller group in the ecosystem that you can imagine getting to adopt it first? You know, mm -hmm. in some way, like, I don't know, like, image sharing, like, there's photos, it's got photo libraries, mm -hmm. and, one big newspaper. I don't know, but which is the group with the max amount of getting into your system? Okay, that, that's interesting. Well, I mean, images are, are easy to start with because most people are familiar with the concept of metadata and images. Um, exit information, right? Um, it's at least easier than explaining metadata for a PDF. Um, so, I mean, something with images and what we were talking about with, with Kathy and Mark uh, might actually be um, one way uh, or one small community, which is uh, OER. Uh, since we have the competency within the foundation as well on, on OER and the standards that's there. Um, so if we could sort of create a small bubble around that <laughs> and make sure that the images used within the OER tools that we're dealing with here um, have this metadata standards, then we could potentially show on, on the use within this community. But also, I guess we think just on the kind of reach where, what's their incentive right now? Like, so what, I, what I'm trying to say is, you know, I mean, an extreme example where you need to increase would be to go to Susan. I'm not your military, but you know, what you love is some example where someone gets loads of trouble for lack of attribution. Because when you go in to try and make that pitch, yep. in a newsroom, you're like, this is what happens to some people who didn't do this right. My tool, do you risk you? Because you've got it in the video. Yep. For the present, I don't think that's something that, you know. All right, okay. So, 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 yeah. so I start off 